do 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 okay so today is monday which means it's time for viewer track reviews Seeing as we just started, I don't think anyone's sent a track in, but I'm pretty sure plenty of people have sent tracks in before the show actually starts. And also even sent me in tracks when they knew they weren't going to be here. Which I guess is, I can't really blame them for doing that, since I haven't really made it clear that um, I, I really only want to do... <sighs> mm. Tracks that are from people who are currently watching the stream so I can give them their advice. Well, I suppose it doesn't matter, really. But. So here's a guy that sent me a track at 3.02 p.m. This is the very first one. So there's... Ha. Huh. He says, it starts slow and there's no sub. Please don't complain too much. I'm probably going to complain a lot about there not being sub. It's called Making Ideas Volume Check by I Don't Know Who because you didn't put your name in the title of the track. This is apparently Jeopardy the Remix. It's interesting that whoever sent this in uh, knew enough about what I was uh, what I said about this track to tell me that there wasn't a sub. But if you knew that there's not a sub, why isn't there a sub? Why isn't there any bass at all for anything? <laughs> that one very doofy kick, like uh, anyway. Um, beyond the, the beyond the very obvious mixing issues. The primary problem with this track, it sounds as though it was made by someone who hasn't taken a long time to sort of analyze music enough. And I don't mean, like, learn theory and learn beats and learn how to do that kind of thing. I mean, like, actually listen to music. I make this I make this comment a lot on a lot of newer people's tracks because this is a very common problem where you are not, you don't, like, you're trying to make music in a vacuum almost. Like, you've heard, you've obviously grown up listening to music and you have music that you like. But you're you're doing it from memory of that music, and that memory is not going to be super accurate. So really, and like, really, what you should do, because what 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 you, what you want to do is you want to make music that feels good to listen to, and you do not yet know why, or what even music that feels good really sounds like. You just know that when you listen to some music that you know that you like, you remember that it does feel good, that it does sound good for you to listen to it. But what you want to do now is you want to listen to that music that you know is good and try and find out why it's good. And you might be thinking, well, okay, music theory and melody and progression, progressions and mixing and all these things that contribute to make it sound good. And those do. But I mean, like, more, way, way more basic stuff, like st overall structure, how long different parts happen for what, like, different instruments that come in and out, like the layering of all this instrumentation, that kind of thing, like, what is actually happening in the track. That kind of thing. You can worry about the theory and the mixing later. If you get down that part, the rest of it will come naturally. Or at least easier. People who are asking me how to send in tracks, if you scroll down, you'll find information for that. I should put like a little scroll down text up here, up in the, up in the stream so people can see it. All right. 
Let's, the next, next person to send this in was at 3 or 3 p.m. The track called Elements by Incan Arat, Incan Aratu, and Cinerat, and Cineratus with a Z. And Cineratus. That's one hell of a name. <sighs> So it's a very solid concept. This whole the track as a whole, like uh, the melody is engaging, the vocals are cool, the beats fine, and all that. But it doesn't it's, it just gets it gets really really boring really fast for me. Like by t by the time it's, it's doing the track second half, it's just it's the same of everything that's already happened, and it's not very engaging. Um, the mix struck me as a little weird. Like it was full enough volume, but it looked like it looked like there wasn't a whole lot of side chaining going on. I feel like you could have uh, benefited a bit from more. I mean, there there was some going on, but like a little more than what there was. That kind of thing. Also, like, um, when you're designing sub, like, I don't know if you had a separate sub in there. Like, the sub was certainly stable enough, so you could have. That's that's cool. But one thing that, um, one thing that I, I, like, when I'm writing stuff, there is such a thing as having your bass be too high. Not necessarily the bass itself, but certainly the sub. Like, you can have your sub go lower, the lower octave, while the actual instrument goes higher to keep the actual bass presence. Because the progression in this track goes like, to the point where it's like really high. It's like, 
a lot higher than I would have. I would have put. I would put actual base. So that um, that's uh, something that to keep into keep in mind. I mean, uh, I felt the high end could have been they could have been a little more present. I felt the high end in the vocals was a little too weird. Like the sibilant vocoding nature kind of felt kind of odd. Um, I'm not really sure how you would fix that. It's like I do a lot. Um, the beginning lead sound sounded too compressed by itself. Like you were compressing it together, and it sounded a little odd for it. Mm, okay. Oh, it's a go track. A go. New DMB whip. Play. I see where you're going with that, and I think it can be tinkered a little bit. Like it's a little, the, the drop is a little too. Uh, but actually, the drop is fine. It's just like the the sound. It's the main sound itself. The kind of this squelchy main bit is a little, a little too much to be the main focus. I think like it. it um, what's the word? Like it's very. It's cool sounding, but it's it's a kind of a sound that I would use almost as a filler kind of thing. I don't really. I would. I don't really think it's 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 the right kind of sound to be the main sound. Now, this is not necessarily to say it's better or worse. It's just that, like, the kind of sound that you want to have as, a, as the actual main sound is one that's not super-duper dense. And, like, that sound is super dense. I know this doesn't mean dense as, like, it's heavy and it's full of things. It's very busy. It's very busy to listen to, which means that, like, it's, it's, it's like, more difficult to focus on, that kind of thing, which makes it really cool for fillers because when it shows up all of a sudden, it throws the listener for a loop. It's kind of like, whoa. And then, and then you go back to doing what you're, something else, and then it's like a, like a, cl a cleanser, a, palate, a mind palate cleanser kind of thing. Um, so uh, as far as sound choice goes, that kind of thing. But as, as far as writing, it's fine. Totally cool. It's reasonable. Uh, I like the drums. I prefer the, the dupes, snares. I like those. That kind of works. I don't know if I'm call, calling it neuro. I guess it is derived from neuro, and it is drum and bass, but it's like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a big genre buff, so I'm, uh, yeah. If you're just joining us and you want to send me a track, scroll down and read the instructions. If you can't see them, that's a problem, because that's where the instructions are. do do, -do. I already played you a track, Mr. Incineratus. Uh, kin kinder uh, King Darrow Dusk. Minimal experimental electro. With question marks and stuff. See, genres are hard. Don't worry, the track's only four and a half minutes long.
I am messing with the volume. I, I know, well, uh, now I'm clipping. Now I'm, I'm messing with the volume some more. That's a little bit better. Yeah. So I just skipped ahead there to kind of verify that the rest of the track was going to do what I thought it would do. And it did, which is surprising. You should be surprised. Um, so what? Uh, the biggest problem with this track is that, like, the levels, the levels are, like, insane. Like, when that first sound, like, out when it began, you had the hats. They were already kind of ch chippy, you know. And then when the first sound came in, it was just like on top of everything. And not like the kind of like, it sits in the mix and like it cuts through. It was just like literally on top of everything that was happening. Like, and then when, when new things got introduced, that's kind of how they all felt as well. They were not really on or with anything. They were just kind of there and stuff was happening in the background. That like, that's just sort of, and it's a little weird. It's, it, was, it was poorly mixed is what I'm getting at. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, not only that, like, not just like in the, in the sense of like making it feel like they belong. There was also just kind of like, the, the curve that you chose to export with was a little intense. Like the, the mids and the highs were just so unbelievably loud. And like the only reason why you would accept that yourself is because either your speakers don't sound like that to you or you have hearing damage. So I would investigate the two options and see what's happening. Uh, progression wise, the track is random. It is like actually random. It's not so much a progressive thing as it does just do kind of random stuff. It doesn't necessarily make any sense to me. It could be a genre thing. It could be something I'm not terribly used to, but as a listener of stuff, stuff, that's kind of what that felt like. I'm just checking to see if I'm clipping. I'm not. And hey, Kush showed up. What's up, Kush? I'm streaming right now because I'm uh, meeting with my band later tonight during the time that I would normally stream. So that means I'm streaming now. And actually, this is probably going to be the case for every Monday, so I should probably make a thing that says that. Now that I now that I think about it, and actually, someone else asked, "Is that if Twitch is going to be the main thing towards the videos now?" And uh, my plan was: see, here's a, here's a, here's the thing about how I do videos is that the setup I have right now for making videos on Twitch is the exact same setup that I use to record videos. This is how I do tutorials, and this is how the video shows up when I do tutorials. It shows up on on YouTube. Um, so my thought was, okay, cool, I would just stream when I do tutorial videos, except that um, my schedule is getting full enough to the point where I can't make videos on the spot like that. I can't plan to do that because that means I don't have time to do things. So I'm going to have to go back to what I, was, I did a long time ago where I would actually make an entire week's worth of videos on the weekend and then put them on a schedule to be uploaded so that... Um, so that I could just do them all the weekend and I could have time to do the stuff I need to be doing during the week. Not only that, but I also didn't expect there to be so much stuff that I'm doing that I actually just can't tell you about or show you. Because if I could, then I would just be doing that. I would just stream all the time, stream producing things. But, like, for example, um, for example, for example, um, Cell Dweller just came out with a new album and I did a remix of one of his tracks and it's on that album. And I could not tell anyone or show anybody anything about something about anything I was doing on that track, which meant that being able to stream it was right out. 
So that kind of conflicted with sort of the business model I'm attempting to, I'm attempting to cultivate and my sort of long-term goal of what I'm doing now. Anyway, so that's just a bunch of that's a bunch of bugs in your ears right there. If you'd like to send me a track to be reviewed, uh, scroll down. There's instructions below. I have a special email set up for for this essentially. All right, so I'm picking picking anyone. Not gonna play remixes, that's the fastest way to get myself content I need. Check is called Past Whip. I don't know who made it, because they didn't put his name in the title. I have a production basics video that speaks entirely about naming conventions, about how to name tracks and stuff like that. And I think in the video, I might have said that it's, if it's just like a whip or something stupid, then it's fine and don't need to worry about it. But now I think I changed my mind. I think you do need to worry about it. I think that at all times, no matter what you're doing, you should put your artist name and the track name in the track that you're making. I make I don't do this sometimes. Like I make the mistake, like I'll put up a track that just says 128, 110, and no one has any idea what the hell that is, but I do. And so it's fine for me, but for everyone else, it's kind of a problem. Just saying. A stare doesn't sound like a snare so much as it sounds like one of those paper folded fans that you whack people with. That's what that snare sounds like to me. Apparently the person who made this track is actually named past. So, yeah, go figure. You need a separate sub. I'm looking at the the vector scope here. I want I want I want to show you something. So look look at what you're looking at right now. Seeing this line that's almost vertical. It's angling to the side because for some reason one of my outputs is putting out more than the other, and I can't balance it. But um, if, then watch what happens when I play his track. It's like a ball. So the vertical line, what that is indicating is that the the content is perfectly mono, and then the ball is indicating that it's, it is almost evenly spread. And having a wide stereo field is good, but the problem with uh, the problem with doing that is that that means that things that should be mono and then also kind of loud, like your bass and the kick drum and your bass in general, which I guess you would have more of if you had a separate sub, and like low frequency things like that, drum content usually, that means that they're also being stereo and they should not be that stereo. Like it needs to be centered to, to a certain extent. A lot of people say things just like, you know, under 150, 100, 200 hertz, you know, to mono it. If you're ever going to print vinyl, under 300 hertz is going to want to mono it, but like that, um, that's just what that looks like. So the vector scope is for.
there's that paper snare again. Now, this kind of rise, build, and then immediate drop kind of thing would work um, if it weren't for the fact that the content immediately before the drop and immediately after the drop has the same intensity level. Like, um, even if you need a little bit of adjustment, like maybe high pass everything for just a second before going in, like, like, like kind of better. But this is, this, this, is, this is the kind of a drop that people just kind of like, oh, we're, we're dropping now. Uh, uh. Can, like, imagine, imagine, like, dealing with this on a, on a dance floor, which... Actually, I've done now because I played a show recently. That's why everything's packed up because I went and did that. That was that was a fun experience. But um, like it, in uh, it's just like I don't know. Arrangement, arrangement wise, that could that could there could be ways of dealing with that because I I've done that you know where in the first half for the first actual drop you have a lot of big build ups and the spaces and fills and stuff and then like it'll. It'll be, it'll be a drop and it'll be fine. And then the second time around, you just kind of like, fuck all that. I don't want to do that again. And then you just go into it and it's cool. Because by now, at this point, you should be familiar enough with what's happening in the song that it shouldn't be a big surprise anyway. And But even though I do do that, I still have some kind of separation between the, the part before the drop and the part that is drop. So... It also sounds like you're not sidechaining anything. And it is my personal opinion that you should sidechain everything. You should duck everything, not sidechaining. I'm really trying not to say sidechaining when I'm trying to say ducking. Sidechaining is a method by which you can connect the signal source into a compressor to duck something onto something else. And that's what we want to do. We want to duck something. It's called ducking. I'm trying to get that in there. I don't like this bass sound, like I just don't, but I'm sure I'm sure people think it's dope. That's okay. You know, you can like things I don't like, but you can change it up a little bit every once in a while. You did a little extra measure there this time just to go out of the drop into the next part, which is one of those things I was talking about, about you know, going between parts. But that could have had a little bit more distinction because really it was just a more of the same for a second and then something new. You could have like added a snare fill or a kick fill or like a filter of some kind to fill, fill, fill things, to fill it. Filler. That's what fills are for. Actually, I want to talk about the part that just happened, this part. A lot of people like to have this kind of like wall of high frequency sound, you know, in their tracks. And it sounds cool. It does work. Um, but one of the things this is missing is any kind of low frequency sound. And I, 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 I said that and that's not really what I meant. What I meant is a low register sound. And this is because even like a, like think a saw wave, for example, even if it's a low octave saw wave, it's still going to have higher, higher harmonics interacting with all the other rest the rest of the high frequency sounds and this imparts a sense of depth of like low feet low tuned depth to something that would otherwise be fully high frequency and on a little too solid on that front and like that's um i talked about this a long time ago actually in my video on youtube called how to bass 15 where i made a bass and a chord sound that go together and it's their purposes to sound together one of them is the high frequency one of them is the bass and like there's sub involved, and sub is good, and you need sub in this track, by the way. But, like, 
it's more about the higher harmonics of the low sound interacting with the higher harmonics of the higher sounds. And that's, that's super important. I'm talking about that. I think the song is over, but there's still like 45 seconds of something happening after this. Ha! We get we get we get a peek into the uh, into the working process here. This is a lesson in how to render your song. Make sure you don't run make sure you don't render stuff you leave at the end of your of your thing there. Ha! <laughs> So yeah, I, I think I like I think I like do, doing the the tips while <coughs> I'm allergic to high frequencies. Um, doing the tips while I'm listening to it because now I I remember what I'm talking about because if I wait to the end I, I often forget a lot of stuff I wanted to say. This is one guy in chat right now who's getting mad at me stopping the track every now and then. I think he's pretty much just being a troll, but the whole point of this is, this, this isn't the, this isn't the track mix. This isn't the viewer track mix. This is the reviews. I am reviewing a track. <laughs> Alright, so I'm look I'm actually just looking at like the um, on my on my Gmail and then I'm looking at the names and then like there's also like they show like the first like part of the first sentence in, in the actual message. And let me tell you something, this is something that BT told me after the little kerfuffle that uh went down when we tried to send out a track that we made to somebody. Um I went and told them that it was a whip and that stuff was still being worked on and that stuff needed to be changed. And later uh Brian was all like, you know, it's okay. Like I I guess there's not really any reason why you would know this. But don't ever tell anybody that the track is not finished or there's anything wrong with it. Do not, especially if, because like if, if we're sending off to a label or a publication or whatever, don't tell anybody that there's anything wrong with it. Like, I can kind of see the value in telling me you think there's something wrong with it, but like, this is kind of like when you're, in, if you ever, if any of you were ever in a band, which I'm sure some of you were at some point, or play an instrument, and you do like a recital or you play a show or something like that and you fuck up. Chances are, like, 90% of the time, you were the only one who would ever know that you fucked up. People who are listening to the music probably don't know enough about what you're doing to know that you fucked up, especially if you're playing original tunes. Like, maybe if you're playing, like, a Bach concerto or whatever, some professor somewhere will know that you fucked up, but, like, chances are most people will not know that you screwed up. And so telling them that you screwed up has served no purpose, except to purposely make you look worse in their eyes, which, as a musician, and as someone who's trying to have a business, being a musician... It's bad. Don't do that. Do all do it. So I just want to impart that bit of BT wisdom onto you. Okay, this one has a disclaimer that says, even if it starts like it, this is not hard style. The track is called Neuro Style. So it's ought to be good. Are we about to get trapped. Bass sound is way too stereo. You need a sub. There needs to be some sub frequent. There's no there's no sub. The only sub is like your snare, your kick.
It also feels super empty. Like, there's not a huge amount of stuff happening in the track in general, which is, I mean, it's fine, I suppose, if that's what you're after, but, like, just for me, it just kind of sounds very sensible. Those are some cool sounds, and I can kind of see a sub happening there, which is interesting because it wasn't any happening before. Oh, this takes me back. I, re I really do like like this breakbeat kind of style going on. Like, I dig it a lot. See, in the drum and bass genre, and and like this 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 kind of like neuro stuff. When we talk about separate subs, it's actually something entirely different than what generally happens in like dubstep and electro, that kind of thing. In dubstep and electro, that kind of thing, we generally talk about a sub beneath a sound. And then whenever that sound happens, there's also a sub reinforcing it. And then if you look at a string of different sounds, there's usually one solid sub beneath all of it to kind of be the bass beneath it. And there's usually such little break in the sounds that there's almost also such a little break in the sub. And so we get a nice solid low end presence all the time. And then we get drum and bass. And the trends are a bit different for kind of like the classical, classic drum and bass styles and the neuro styles and like that kind of thing. And for what they're born of and that sort of deal. What ends up happening is that we have a, a an actual separate sub. And what I mean by that is a sound that's not reinforcing anything. It, everything else is high pass and then there's a sub that's doing its own goddamn thing. And usually what this means is that you have like in this track you have the drop, the main, the main groove of the whole track. going on here and the sounds themselves are very choppy and there's like different things going on and not all of them have bass beneath it that sort of thing and as a result we have a very uneven bass presence because the base the bass is if they, if they are reinforced although they don't really seem like they are to be totally honest they um they uh it seems choppy and unrelated and so what what the what the, the designers would do in tracks like this from back in the day is that they would just have a separate, a separate entirely separate instrument that is just a sub bass that goes beneath everything and just does its own kind of thing. Like it was it was kind of weird when I was doing the um when I was doing the Black Sun Empire Noisia collaboration track remix competition that was a mouthful um, that happened in that track. There was a lot of like mid range basses and reeses and neuroy sounding things, and then there was this, this very solid unbroken sub instrument going on beneath. Um, the entire track that just didn't relate to what was happening. And as a result, those bass and other bases could do whatever the hell they wanted. And and everything else still had a nice, you know, evenness to it. Like right there, right there is do it's doing what I was describing. I mean, there's a sub, and then when there's a, there's a little moment of silence in there, and then the sub keeps going. Like I'm I'm aware that this is kind of like a personal opinion of mine that that should be happening all the time. That there should be sub present all the time, and I can see why other artists might be like, oh no, I want negative space and silence for a second, and that kind of thing. And you can do either, really. It's just sort of I I expect there to be a sub. It's just kind of what I look for. <laughs> This is actually kind of like the opposite problem that uh, Go had at the beginning of the stream, where you got these really sick sounds happening in this section here, but then during the actual main parts of the track, your main bass is just dull as shit in comparison to those sick sounds. Those sounds, like, that should be the main sound, like those sounds. 
and like this the actual main sound that you have is just so like not interesting in comparison that it's just, it's just uh. although I, I mean I, I'm, I'm assuming the point of this track is that you're trying to work hard style sound design into a drum and bass track and then you use neuro as kind of like a flavoring to it that's fine but like that's just my take on it I guess where's the play button I see you telling me in the chat that you have a sub in there, but I'm looking at the analysis. And, like, there's 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 having a sub, and then there's having a sub in there meaningfully. I can see that during some parts that you have a sub that's, like, reasonably, like, an underneath it, you know, on point, like, loud enough, that kind of thing. But then during during the parts, like, the, the way back here. It feels like it's really lacking in bass. I can kind of see that you. I, I can see it in there, like every once in a while. But then, but the the vast majority of time spent in that moment, in those in those sounds, don't have the reinforcement in there, and so it doesn't sound like there's a separate sub. And that's why. That's why I went on that whole spiel about filling every bit of low end with the sub, even if there's not anything actively on top on top of it. All right, back up, back over here. With compensation EQ, it sounds pretty loud. That's interesting. That's, that's interesting to me. Because, like, <laughs> I mean, I, I understand the purpose of a compensation EQ. That's that's good. But then I have to imagine that, um, oh, I guess that depends on whatever your reference was. If you were referencing some seriously old drum and bass, I can see how that would that would bring, draw you to that conclusion. That, like, if you listen to, like, even even modern noisy, like, on their last, on their last album, if you listen to the stuff from there, and that was a reference, I can see that being what you did because they their their bass like sub bass presence isn't terribly loud, and a lot of their older stuff isn't terribly loud either. But that's also not very modern. But if that was your point. That was your goal. Then you did that. You succeeded. Zyphos glitch hop. Supercritical fluid. Does that mean he's exploding? I'm sure, I'm sure that means something. I don't know what though. Wait a minute, wait a minute. My reference track was Poison's theme from the Devil May Cry soundtrack? That Poison's theme? I, I'm, I'm waiting for a response because this, this isn't. I have a point to make if that's the case. But we're talking about some other poison. There's a lot of poisons out there. Maybe. I mean, maybe. Whatever. If that was, if that was, I mean, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but like the, the point I'm making is that like. The uh, soundtrack music sound design is very different from listener, just regular listener music sound, like just design in general and writing and mixing and that kind of thing. I actually made a joke a long time ago about, um, about like, uh, what the hell do I call it? Weak ass movie dubstep, that kind of thing, where. I mean, I, I guarantee you've heard you've seen, you've heard something like this where you're like watching a trailer for some blockbuster movie or whatever, and then there's like su suddenly dubstep in, the, in it, but like it doesn't sound very heavy or loud or punchy or really anything that you uh, attribute to a dubstep track or any kind of EDM for that matter. And if you go, if you ever for some reason go and, and look for the actual music, um, the uh, the uh, um, like if you go find the OST and you listen to the to the music. It uh, you're suddenly just kind of like, wow, this is really cool. It's really well written, and like it has its flows well, but in the mix is just like so not right. It doesn't sound like it would like if you listen to like a Space Lasers track, and then you went and listened to like Hans Zimmer, uh, dubstep in a movie trailer kind of thing. They sound and feel totally different, and the reason for that is because the movie, the weak ass movie dubstep, serves a purpose, 
and I'm not saying the regular music doesn't doesn't serve a purpose, but like the purpose that music, regular music serves is the sound is awesome by itself as possible. Whereas movie music only is to sound awesome enough, but not too awesome. Not so awesome as to, to distract from what's actually happening. Because as much as they seem like they are, trailers and movies are not music videos. They are videos with music. There is a significant difference. And he's saying that he wasn't actually he wasn't actually doing it to that track, but that ended up sounding like that. But like that's like even if that wasn't your point, I'm still making a point anyway. Because like uh, basically the point I was going to make was that that's not necessarily a wonderful reference to have, especially if you're if you're trying to make like music 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 that's supposed to sound sweet as hell by itself, versus music that's designed to work with something else. This is all I was going to say about that, which I ended up saying a lot in many more words. <laughs> The snare in this, actually, I don't even know if it's the snare. I think it's the hat that just has that really high, you can look at it. It's just a ridiculous high resonance. This track sounds like drums were made by somebody squeaking their shoes in like an, like an arena somewhere. So it's like squeak, 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 squeak. Hear it? can't get over that the, the hats I might be gonna talk about mixing like I've never heard such a happy a happy track with what was going on there like it's it's cool sound design. It's way too much reverb, but it's not everything. But like, it's cool sound design. It's just like the track is so happy. It's in such a like a, a s s singly major key. Like it's not even like trying to sort of allude to being happy. It's just like full on, ah, and then suddenly, blah, 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 blah. Boink, boink, boink. squeaky, 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 squeak. Like, damn. Like, uh, but like. There's nothing, there's nothing really wrong with that. It's just so weird. Everything about that was weird and just so very identical to what you expect from that kind of thing. I feel like, I feel, I mean, I don't know what you were attempting to go for, but like, if you were trying to do the usual kind of like happier sounding, more funky kind of thing, that stuff's still written in a minor key, just so you know. It was, I mean, those were cool bases. The drums were bad. The drums are bad. Fix your drums. Whale tracker review. Fun day track review. My one stop shop for whale anthems. Uh, I probably shouldn't be playing this, but I'm gonna. <laughs> That's all there was. That's the entire thing. That sounded like an unmastered clip of a track from 2009. That's all I'm going to say about that. 
Er yin 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 shirt and road mop whip. Narod narod mop. On a down box, a down box, a drop box. I call it down box. I guess I would have called it a down box drop load. Intros are already way too long. Nice try. So everything was pretty much fine, except for your long ass intro until the drop happened. And then the drop happened, and it sounded like it sounded like the uh, whatever modulation you had going on for that bass, you just kind of forgot to go above twenty percent the entire time. And it just sort of I I, I, I I kind of think I knew we were trying to go it was sort of like a more sort of future future based kind of feel, which I finally know what that means. And uh, I wouldn't have been a bad idea. It's just that like, this particular execution of it didn't really work out so well. Um, as well, like the drums, it just kind of, it just, like uh, everything about it made it feel like it was gonna be a lot harder than it was, be a lot more present and loud and kind of in your face kind of thing. Like you know, any of any of the Cohen soundtracks are kind of kind of like this way, that sort of thing. And like it, what's that sort of deal? It wouldn't have been so like I wouldn't have expected it so much if it weren't for the fact that the bass itself had a very gnarly texture to it. It just felt very muddled and like suppressed, and like you're just like, no, stay down, no, no, don't come back up, nope, stay there. You got this sort of gnarly like harmonic activity happening, but you didn't do anything with it. But you, the sound made you feel like you were gonna do something with it, and then you didn't. So the sound just felt, just felt just weird. The rest of that was pretty great though. And if you turn it up, it would be far too loud. Well, nothing wrong with being far too loud. He's a great artist. Mm, official Straightforward is this guy's name. Progressive House with Vocals. How long is this track? Four and a half minutes. Okay. I always check how long tracks are when someone's like, here's a nice trance progressive track. And it's like 30 minutes long. I'm like, ah. Uh. Or I'll play it with the intention of skipping parts. But this is only four and a half minutes long, so I think it'll be fine. This Tom already has more sub going on than most of the tracks I've heard so far.
So by the way, uh, four and a half minute song. I don't know if this is a, this is a, this is a private link that the guy sent me. So I don't know if this is a whip or not, but like. A DJ intro is not always totally necessary. You can upload a track that doesn't have a DJ intro. For people who are not aware of what a DJ intro is, everything we've heard so far is a DJ intro. The track just now has begun. And the whole point of the DJ intro is that it enables DJs to more effectively mix tracks. That's just in case no one knew that. But um, normally you would see a track and it's like, oh, six and a half minutes long. It's got a big ass intro and a big ass outro to help you for DJs. But this is only four and a half minutes long. So like, I, I, either this is a very short track or it's not done yet. If that's the case, was the DJ intro I really hope those vocals are yours or someone you know that you recorded and not an acapella from something. I'm going to be really annoyed if I have to edit this out later. The rhythm of your side chaining was just slightly too fast and it made it feel off time. That's what that feeling is. Also, the lead line is a little too harsh. It's not, there's a physical, it sounds like there's nothing going on beneath it. And this actually, this um, I don't know if you're around for this, but I was discussing with someone else about how, like, you know, the, the high end wash of sounds, how a wall of sound kind of thing feels pretty good, but it feels almost like it's lacking something if you don't have low instruments in there. I'm not necessarily saying it talking about sub. I'm talking about like just a saw wave at a low register, even if it's high passed, because the higher frequencies of a low sounding sound interacting with higher frequency sounds from a higher frequency sound makes it feel better together. It's kind of like, like you know, the old, I call it the overwork stack because that's kind of the artist that inspired me to figure that one out when I was originally, when I originally tried to do it myself way back when I was trying to figure out how to do EDM. Come on, Zach Club. All right. See, the reason why the side chaining worked when it was just to kick during the intro and not during the drop is because the higher frequency stuff wasn't there to be inter interfere, interfe interfere with it. Because I'm sure the side chaining fits the kick, and that's nice, that's good, but kick is too short for that kind of thing to happen. Like, a kick is fine, don't worry about the kick, just change the side chain to be a little bit longer and you get the rhythm back. Or don't side chain it as hard on the higher frequency things, although it, it is in the style of the side chain everything, that's a big old column, and that's fine, just sort of, just saying. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
That's the big ass outro I was talking about. Really, really kind of a short track for something like this is. The vocals are very nice. I enjoy them a lot. I enjoy the the melody and the harmonies and all kind of stuff and like the stacking and that kind of deal. It's very good, very cool, and it works with the melody quite well. Um, the main sort of, I not even chorus, I guess. Like, I guess technically the drop. Like, I mentioned the Calvin Harris earlier. And this feels like something to stick to the style of those kinds of like poppy poppy electro tracks and <clears throat> I guess I guess try and like reference the stuff more I don't necessarily mean that like I mean you've got you've got the you've got the structure down you've got the writing down pretty much everything about this is, is on point except for that that too fast side chain and slightly that it's a kind of just mis mixing error with the main part. And that's just kind of how the leads and the chords and the rest of everything kind of mix. And for that, I recommend that you just re look real hard at like, you know, Tiesto stuff. Uh, I almost said Red Fang. Um, uh, Martin Garrix even. Um, Calvin Harris. I would call him Calypso. I can't think of names right now. Oh my God. Uh, although this is not really the kind of music I listen to. I listen, I listen, the only reason why I'm familiar with this stuff is because I've had students who are just kind of like, how do you make these things? And so I've had to pay really close attention to how these drops work. But overall, very solid. Very good. All right. Coming up at the halfway point. I'm only doing two hours today. House. Nexon Spellbound. The guy who made the track came back and said that they hate Garrix and Tiesto. And you might, that's fine. You can hate them as, I mean, I do. I don't like the music. I also really just kind of hate that they're at the position they are and, and that they're as bad at what they do as they are, uh, which is to say the music. But if, any, if ever you're going to have a lesson in life, it's that being the best at something does not necessarily mean that you're going to be the most well-known or, or the most well-compensated for what you do. In fact, it's probably going to be the opposite. But... Um, even though I'm not a fan, they're fans, like, they still use, their songs are still examples of things that are coveted, which is, which is mostly popularity. So, you know, emulating that is a sure way of doing, you know, reasonable things. And, like, the, whoever makes their music, I mean, I guess Garrix makes his own tracks, albeit stupidly, and Tiesto has ghost producers, but whoever makes them, makes them well. And it's, it pays to sort of... Look at it from a more objective angle is what I'm saying. Because like, it took me a while to just be like, yeah, this is freaking big room. Meh, meh. Until someone was like, oh, well, how do you make this one? This, yeah, that Skrillex and the Mile Notice and Kill the Noise and someone else all on that one track. And there's like the, 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 the clanky sound. And like, I had a hard time making it. So like, serves me right for being haughty about it. Check it out. It's like, a, it's like a nuke. It's like a cross between a nuke and a Mandarin character.
I just stopped the track to check to make sure I didn't accidentally start playing something else because it sounds like two tracks playing together at once. And DJ Adro, I don't know what you were trying to do in the drop there, because it felt like you had this relatively under control until, like, the the, the drop happened. I call it the drop. I guess it was a drop. There's a rise and a break and then a crash and whatever. I also felt like all, like, there's no bass. Like, there's, there was no low end to it. And, like, uh, did were, was everything just, like, Loops just shoved together. Also, I'm not super. I'm not super a huge fan of just like random vocal samples thrown and stuff. I like vocals in tracks, and I like vocals sampled from the vocals that are in tracks. But I'm really not a big fan of just like randomly stuff happening kind of thing. That bit that happened in um, uh, sometime. I didn't do that. That wasn't me. That was Nucleon. <laughs> Did you know that it was going to sound like that? Like, did you listen to it? I, it was this on purpose? This is what I'm trying to get at. Because, like... It, 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 uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know how to say, to say that. I mean, I'm just, I am just on, on top of that. Fascade. So it's probably supposed to be facade, facade, but uh, but the way it's spelled is fascade. Rain, original mix. Is this to say that there's other mixes? I just went to check to see if there was a DJ outro because I would have been kind of annoyed if there was a DJ outro on a track that says original mix.
Is this like is this like that song that's just all risers? That note was wrong. That one right there. Now, if you if you take my advice that I've given before about analyzing tracks and looking at structure and looking at like how you know things proceed that kind of thing, you probably would have come up with a track like this. And the only reason why this track seems dumb in comparison to tracks that do this and are wildly popular is because they have vocals. It's really the the only separating factor here. <laughs> And those doofy snares are really, really, like, way too loud in the mix. Yeah, okay, so... The melody was cool, it's just that it was overused so hard. So overused. And, I mean, one thing you might have also done, if you did, if you did look at um, uh, the structures of tracks, is you would have noticed something that is referred to as the bridge. The bridge is where we go to something that's not the main melody, that can be related to the main melody, but is different from the melody, so that when we go back to the main melody, it seems new and fresh. That's the, part, that's the purpose of the bridge. <laughs> Seventeen seconds. One second. This feels very short. And it says I made this drop, I don't know where to go. Well, the next step would be to make the rest of the song. If you don't know how to do that, listen to other music to see how they did. Like, I'm not just being like, just go listen to the music and then figure it out yourself. Nah, like listening to other pe people's music, it's like a handbook for how to do whatever it is that they did, because you can just see what they did. And I'm not just being like, if you just you're you're in the matrix, you can look at the code and you can be like, oh, that's a blonde, that's a redhead, that's a that's a brunette, that's a monster, that's a that's a massive preset. Like you can you can look at that, you can look at it, you can listen to the track, and you're not you're not you're not going that deep. You're just going, okay, they have a riser that starts here and ends here. There's a break for a B, and then the snares build up and hit it. There's, like, there's, you know, it, it's it's derived from the melody of the drop during the intro. There's an arp that goes in the background. It goes up and down and filters. Like, that kind of stuff. Like, that sort of is what you're looking at. And it really is just, like, a map. They have written you a map for what they've done to make the music that you're listening to. And you can read that map. And you can do that for your stuff, your own stuff. Just be like, you don't even need to know what you're doing. You can just be like, cool, it's hard to do a filter just doing this. I like, you don't even know why you're doing what you're doing, what you're doing it. And then while you're doing it, you're, you'll figure out why. It's kind of like taking notes in school. It's why they have you take notes. Because even if you might already kind of know what's happening, the fact that you're writing it will put it in your brain in a different way, in a different way that makes speculation much easier. That kind of thing. 
anyway. Oh, 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 oh. Did I download this? I was trying to. Uh, Machine Rule Hyperia. Such name. Much track. I spent too much time doing weird shit with my face that I wasn't actually paying attention to the track. Like, I think this sounds ridiculous, and there wouldn't be music that I ever I like to listen to, but it sounds good. It's mixed well, it has basses and subs and stuff, and, like, nothing, nothing about it actively hurts me to listen to it. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a bridge. Can we modulate it one more time? Yes, I think we can. One thing though is that it definitely does sound very, almost dull. Like it's, it's kind of like the opposite of dull just because the track is very dense and fast and pretty and that kind of thing. But there's no, there's no spatial element to it. It's very, it's very centered. The chords are very there. There's no reverb of any kind to be found. There's no arps and shit in the background, sparkly Steve things, that kind of thing. The track could use some of that. Kind of an odd choice for an outro, but whatever, it's fine. I mean, I've done I've done lame ass piano cop outs before, so I can't complain. What am I talking about? Of course, I can complain. Everyone can complain. Ah. 
This guy's name is Ack Animate, I guess. Complex door whip. snare sounds like if like they had recorded a drummer playing a snare and like it was just like this this like perfect storm of like everything broke when he hit the thing and then they pitched it up really hard so like if you were to slow down that that snare sample you would hear like a drum kit dis disintegrating on a microphone <laughs> track should be called The Past. Or maybe Passage. The Passening. in the chat actually just make kind of an interesting point about how like the, the first half of this track was just entirely filtered and like you can get some mileage out of that that's fine but that might have been a little too much just for that particular thing but he made a point about the saying like let leave 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 the high passing to the djs playing the track and that is an interesting conversation to have about the jobs of producers and the jobs of djs because i mean really the baseline of what a DJ is supposed to do is just mix one track and another track together. You can get much more interesting with that. You can get very, you can get very handsy with it, but it's a little harder to do that if the track is already full of all the kinds of tricks and things that we're used to hearing from DJs. And in fact, a lot of sound design and writing and arrangement and the song process, like the way we're used to listening to it, was derived from hip hop and hip hop, and those those tracks are the results of turntablist things and, and DJs and that kind of thing. So when we write tracks, we're writing, like when we have the sensibilities we have that are born of things that DJs have done to things that tracks that didn't used to do that. And like, there's even, there's even in my track resolve, there's a, there's a moment before a drop where there's like a, this track, this, I use gross beat and the track scratches before the next drop. It goes, eh, 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 and then the drop happens. And I played that track when I went and played, um, the show that I played on Friday. And I thought to myself, I, I really don't want to do anything. Like, I mean, DJs are always doing things and hitting knobs and effects and shit. And I don't want to do any of that because I've already done all of that in the track that I wrote. And that just felt very weird. And, if, and thinking about it, if you think about the density of, like, a hip-hop track versus the density of a track like this, it makes DJs' jobs very, very interesting. <laughs> This is what a solid separate sub looks like. This 
This track has the same problem as the other one where it sounds kind of empty. It needs more stuff happening up top. It doesn't need to be that loud. You don't need to be like, you need to be an art, but I need to be able to hear every single note all the time. Like, it's just up there to add harmonic noise, essentially. Noise that's in key with everything else. That's what, that's what arps are for. return to the passing. We've cut off at the pass. That made no sense. That transition from nothing to drop suddenly made no sense to me. Hi, Marcy. During the drops, it was nice and crisp, and that's that's actually that crispness is what I was talking about about the low frequency like sounds. That it was you know low frequency bass and very full of harmonics. That there's a lot of high frequency harmonics, lots of crunchy high frequency content that are sourced from basses. And if you hear just like if you hear just high pass that, which you obviously did a lot of, and then layer that in there with like all those crazy chords and tracks passed, all that stuff would sound a lot better and have a lot more presence, even if there wasn't a lot of sub. But this track had a lot of sub. I like the fact that it had a lot of sub. I was I was I was pleased. Please, please. Ent un entosis, entosis. Are you an ent unseen? We don't know. We can't see him. Okay. This is apparently the quietest DMB track ever. Good effort. It was very quiet. Obviously, just a pretty master that kind of thing. I like the kind of roadsy feel to it. That's pretty cool. Um, 
bits was neat. The little wobs that happened later were a little bit interesting. It's just that I think that there's too much resonance on the, the kind of the cutoff kind of thing. Uh, I, I, I felt pretty okay. I mean, wasn't super wonderful, but I mean, just keep keep at it, and uh, you'll find a groove though. And like the transitions, and like, this is another one of those kind of like listen to musics, listen to musics made from the others artists, artists read like, read, uh, listen to tr other tracks that artists you likes have likes have made. Oh my god, I am not using words today. Listen to other tracks that were made by artists that you like, and treat treat them as if they were a handbook for how to make the music that they made, an instruction manual, if you will. Code Zero Music Airtime. Free download. That sounds familiar. I think I've heard this before. Huh, we're not. Maybe someone took that roadmap track idea a little too literally. This is, a, this is a finished track because like it peaks like a pre-master <laughs> i'm looking at looking at this and i'm also looking at like I'm, I'm funnily enough i'm looking at the windows volume meter because it's actually showing me up to zero db but um yeah Pause. Really? Although I did, I did find that they like people at shows do actually start clapping during breaks, which I thought was kind of an odd practice.
So much like the other tracks, it suffers from sort of the sameness of the, that the genre kind of offers, and it's kind of up to you whether or not you want to keep it being the same, which is not necessarily bad, or sort of trying to make it more interesting. Um, but uh, on the topic of quote-unquote more interesting and better and that kind of thing, you have to consider who you're trying to please. There's sort of like three possible at least it's sort of in my own experience anyway, like how I do my music, there's three sort of primary audiences. There's me. This is, I do what I want to do. And this is the big part of what I do. And then there's you guys, which are which occupies other producers. Other producers and what they want and that kind of thing. And then there's music listeners. Now, doing the kind of music that you want to make is often prescribed by people who have quote unquote made it as being sort of like do what you want to do man do what you're making do what make the music you want to make otherwise they'll be all meaningless and that kind of thing and they can take that however you want to take it it means different things to different people um then there's other producers where you're trying to impress your peers that kind of thing basically and that's hard because producers know things and even if they aren't like as good as you are or even if they're better as you than, than as you are the fact that they know even the most basic things, like they even know a massive is, they know what a preset is, they know what an 808 is. The fact that they know these things immediately makes the level of how much like how much stuff will impress them way higher than your average music listener. A music listener has tastes and they have desires and they and they can make comparisons between one track and another track, but it like it doesn't even compare to the kind of like str stringent. Uh, strict um, how much producers care it's a word for that I'm not thinking about what it is it's like you need to like it's just uh, it's, it's, it's hard to keep producers impressed because they know things and they, so they know what you're doing it's kind of hard to you know that kind of thing which is why it's kind of like it's kind of like the, the adage about how uh, if you're learning to, if you want to learn to be a musician you need to be prepared to lose the magic because if you're a, if you're a viewer of a, a magician doing his act, even if you know a little bit about it, like ah oh, magic's not real, it's obviously a trick. The shit that they do is just so cool to look at that the the the, the magic is not so much that oh it's a trick that like oh my god I know it's a trick. How the fuck did he do that? Like the fact like the fact that I ha I can cross out magic as being a being a way that he did things that means that there's only so many other more ridiculous things that he has done to do what he did. And then you become a magician. You learn the things, you learn the tricks, and then all of a sudden, a whole lot of shit becomes a lot less impressive. Things that would have marveled you before, you're just kind of like, oh, he's, oh, okay, all right. And that happens with music. When you become a producer, a lot of things are just like, oh, that's a massive preset from 2003. Like, it's just, you're just like, uh, and stuff happens like, stuff, stuff happens like, I, I started watching American Horror Story recently, and in the second season, they used this preset sound from Omnisphere. And you know, you know what that preset is called? It's called, like, Fox Hit or something. Or, like, Action TV Show Hit or something like that. And it's in the Rumps folder. Or maybe that... No, that's not, that's not Omnisphere. That's, that's Storm Drum. It's from Storm Drum. It's from Storm Drum 2. It's an East-West East sample library. Anyway, it's, like, super obvious and super, like, prevalent. And they use it all the time. Like... And it was, and I hear that, I'm just like, cool, this guy's job, this guy's, like, working on primetime AAA television, and he's using presets. And so, like, as a producer, that pisses me right the hell off. That immediately makes me think that whatever this guy's doing is trash, I'm not going to listen to it or care about it or anyway, participating in it. But the thing is, though, is that, Listeners and TV viewers and that kind of thing, people who are not producers, do not know. They have no concept of what any of these sounds are. They might think that, oh, that sounds kind of similar to the other one, but they weren't paying attention then, and they're only barely paying attention now to the technical aspect of these things. And so really, who's the chump? The guy who used a preset and did almost no work, or the guys listening to the, listening to the results and being completely entertained by it, perfectly, it'd be totally fine, or the guy who spends all of his time, like me, fabricating everything from nothing because he hates the idea of presets. And whoever's watching, you know, if I were to work on the same TV show, it would have had the exact same result. The exact same result being whoever listened to it would have been like, okay, that's cool. That's that little moment there. The exact same level of, like, accomplishment would have had, only that guy would have done one-eighth the amount of work that I did. 
So again, who's the chump? In a very objective sense, I would be the chump in this in this argument. So when you're making when you're making things and you're contemplating your audience, if your if your audience is primarily you, then you're you only have you whatever your standards are for whatever your music is, and then, then fuck everyone else and don't worry, worry about what I'm saying. If, I mean, given the idea that you're even here at all, I have to I have to believe that this is not totally what you're going for. And then there's impressing producers, and this just involves lots of work. You have to try really hard. You have to not use presets. You have to you constantly be on your toes because your peers can probably do what you can do at least as good as you. And that means that you need to kind of be on point about it. And then there's the other one. Damn it, I was, I was going to try and be this one. This is the one. The, the viewers. Now, the, the music listeners where if you're going to make music for them, then it's almost like counterproductive to try hard. Unless you're making like music for listeners and for yourself. In which case, you know, a combination of that, that's fine, whatever. But like if you're worrying about like, oh, they're gonna like it, they're gonna like it, like they're really going the only thing they care about is if it sounds awesome. They don't really care why it sounds awesome, they don't care how it sounds awesome, they just care that it sounds awesome. And I said this because this track that we just listened to was full of a lot of that kind of stuff. If it will ever play ever again. Even if whoever did make this from like made this from scratch, I could probably find all of that as presets somewhere or a sample pack someplace. So that and that means that whoever made this made it from scratch and it was really good and you know worked out fine and if mixed and it's okay. And or there's me who just like cheats the shit out of the system and just makes the same exact thing with presets and with samples and without as much work. And a listener who was tasked to pick a favorite but would just be like, I like both. And then they put it in their party mix. It goes and they play it and they play it on their iPod on shuffle. And then it shows up at a party, and then nobody bats an eye at it at, at all. So that is uh, that is the point of that or that that whole spiel I just gave. And this is also a part of um, a post I made a while ago about whether or not you want, like, for your career, like, if you want to have a career, um, you have to you have to think about what your career is supposed to be for. Is it a hobby? Which is primarily making music for yourself, making it for your own your own good and your own self desires and that sort of thing. Or is it a business? And if it's a business, then the other two guys are the ones that you have to please. The producers and the viewers, listeners. In my case, it's producers and listeners. For anyone else's case, it'd be mostly just listeners. Because, you know, like, my, my business my business thing is all about doing tutorials and sound design, that kind of thing. Which means that all of my, all of my tracks have to be seriously impressive all the time. Or like a, at least, like, a minimum level of impressive. Or they're not going to be useful. Listeners might like it. They might be like, yeah, cool. But, like, producers just be like, Ugh. So my goals are different. And, like, if you are just going to be, like, gung-ho music business, you know, career guy then you need to learn how to game the system. You need to learn what the game is, what the system is, what the goals are, and then optimize what you're doing and maximize your output in a way that doesn't kill you. Like, for example, um, Virtual Riot, either today or recently, someone put up a video where he did a drop in 10 minutes. And kind of interesting, he used a lot of presets. He used a lot of presets that he made, he had his own drum pack. He had his own preset pack. I mean, a drum pack of drums that he apparently got from other places, but it was still, he had, he had packs of things. And he also began by opening a preset project, like pre-routing, pre, some pre-mixing, I have, I have to imagine. I don't really know what he did with the project, but he had pre-things. He was set up to, to two things. And then he went and made stuff, and he wrote stuff in it. But, like, a lot of the prep work was already done because he optimized the shit out of his workflow. And that's what, that's how a professional rolls. And I don't do that because I like doing everything the hard way. I probably should do it that way and make a lot of stuff a lot easier for me. So that's uh, and a good example of how you can do that kind of thing. Because you do burning out is a very real thing you have to worry about. And like part of the reason why I haven't done videos a lot lately, like I haven't put up a video since the last viewer mix. And that's because I've been ultra busy lately. And even though my pipeline is really, really short, it's still a little hard for me to keep up to keep up the output. And it's only because my pipeline is so ridiculously short that I have been able to keep up my output the way that I have. 
Because if I had done if I had done tutorials like the normal way with editing and cuts and like visual things and intros and outros and like menus and all those kinds of shit every time, I wouldn't. There would not be enough time for me to do that, and the return would not be anywhere near enough to support that kind of activity. So that's uh, important. Important. Lululu. Vortex, arcane, not the vortex from the live mix. You should probably fix that, you know, having a name like that. See, I have a, I'm, I'm seamless. I'm technically seamless R. And I'm, I'm technically seamless R because there's another seamless who does EDM. There were other seamlesses before who do like metal and like Irish folk and shit. So I didn't care about that. But if there's someone else who does, has your, you have your name and they're like, also on my live stream, that's a little bit more of a tinier degree of separation than kind of what I needed to, needed to deal with. And you will eventually have problems. Oh my god, that's that, that's that guitar sample, isn't it? That's, uh, oh my god, shit, is that in here? Where is it, where is it, where is it? The guitar. Ah, no, where is it? I know it's in here somewhere. Shit, I'm not gonna be able to find it. Ah. Someone that tried to say that we should have, we should make a book and call sample detector. It's called Content ID.
swear to God, I'm going to find that, that sound. See, now, I had assumed that it was in... It's a really... it's a, the, the sound that I'm thinking of is super duper old. Like, he probably didn't even use it. Or if, he, if, he, if whatever it is he used, he probably might have used this particular sound. I could have sworn it was in here. But, like... That's not it. Of course, now I'm not going to be able to hear it because I have the light that rounded. Okay, let's be completely superfluous and make, open up an entirely other FL to serve this purpose of trying to find the sample. I used it in like ultra old songs. Is it here? No, this is the same folder. Uh, legacy. Legacy. No, Simpsons? That would be hilarious if it was in here. No. Now the only way I can think of play it if I can think of a song of mine that I used it in from 10 million years ago. But whatever. Anyway, so this track um, had some of the same problems with the older ones with the kind of rep repetitive melody, but you didn't use it as much. You, you you know, at least during your drop, you didn't continue to keep using it. You had some things going on in the drop. But then during the drop, you suffered from... Legacy! You suffered from um, the sounds feeling super duper random. And... Like being uh, like not it didn't, didn't feel the flow it didn't really work very well from the, the the not the drop sounds and then the regular kind of melodic stuff. So like, and there's not super easy ways to fix that. And not only that, but like my own sensibilities for whether or not it works or not could just be wrong. Like there are enough songs out there by people who are successful that are worse about that kind of stuff. So like maybe you're you did a good job, but you had a sub, so that was good. Sub for sub, good job. Um, I think I just did that. All right, this is happening. Oh. Wait, is that hard even plugged in? I guess it must be. Wait, it's not. It's not even at all. I can't go there. I can't find. Uh, uh, it needs to be in here. I like how this is all still here because it's technically not even. Like, it's not in drums. It's definitely not in there. FX. It was just a ding, ding. It was in pads. It would be hilarious if it was in pads. Got some of those sounds. It's just not here. So they got rid of it during uh, some of the one of the one of the, the older um you did that. Yeah, they got they got rid of it from the current installs. Which is a bummer. Actually, maybe one of these guys used it. It'd be really funny if they did. Because they'd still keep it in here if they did. It has to be really old. Where, where is it? Uh... There's also a, um, a string sample that I, I used a lot back in the day. All right, no idea, no idea where that is. Anyway, we're about done, so I just wasted our last minutes trying to find a sample that doesn't exist anymore. Um, I, have a, I have to go do a lesson, so I'm going to go do that. Uh, so next year will be tomorrow. It'll be at the regular time, 7 p.m. EST minus 5 GMT. It'll be the uh, sound design request stream. It'll be great. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions about all of that, all of that, all of that, all of that. Let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.